This is Mr. Martin. These are the video notes for uh, Math Analysis Pre-Calculus Honors, uh, Section 4.7. We're going to be talking about inverse trig functions in this video. So let's uh, take a look back in algebra, we, which we often do in this class, as we go back and look at something we did in algebra and then apply it to trig functions. So in order uh, for a function to have an inverse, it must be one-to-one. -one. So uh, some important things to remember about functions is that to test if it's a function, and not just a relation, you use the vertical line test. So remember, the vertical line test says if you can draw a vertical line anywhere on the graph and it will only intersect your curve in one spot, then it's a function. So if we want to test to see if a function has an inverse, again, when we say inverse, we mean that it's a function. We use the horizontal line test. So we draw a horizontal line, and if it goes through the curve in more than one spot, then it does not have an inverse. So every function will have um, a relation when we switch the x and y values. That's basically what we're doing when we are finding an inverse. But that won't always be a function, that inverse. So again, algebraically, we switch the x and the y values. And then you resolve it for y. And then to find the inverse graphically, we reflect the original graph over the line y equals x. So sometimes what we want to do in order for the original function to have an inverse is we'll restrict the domain of the original function so that it will have an inverse. So let's take a look at y equals x squared. So that's our parabola. I'm just going to kind of draw a rough sketch of it in here. And here's my line y equals x. And when I reflect this over the line y equals x, it's going to look something like this. Okay, if you have a little mirror and you actually place it on the line y equals x and you look into the mirror, this is what it would actually look at. So you face the mirror one way, look into the mirror, face the other mirror the other way, look into the mirror, that's what you get. So we can see that my red graph here does not pass the vertical line test. It is not a function, but we want it to be a function. So how can we restrict the original uh, domain of y equals x squared so that we do have a function? So if I take just the part of the graph where my values of x are greater than 0, so let's restrict domain of y equals x squared to x greater than or equal to 0. Then when I reflect it over the line y equals x, then I get just this part here. And this green highlighted part of the graph is a function. So that's what we're going to end up doing with our trig functions, because when we reflect them over the line y equals x, they're not going to be functions. They're going to fail the vertical line test in a big way. So let's go ahead and let's take a look. Here's um, a small part of the graph of y equals sine x. So I've got y equals sine x. And we can see, if I reflect this over the line y equals x, it's going to be a squiggle that goes up and down. And the vertical line test is going to go through in an infinite number of places. So what we want to do here, let's take a look at some key points here. This is going to be pi over 2. And this is going to be negative pi over 2. So if I look at just the portion that goes from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, again, one way to check to see if there's an inverse is uh, to use the horizontal line test on the original function. So if I use the horizontal line test on just this highlighted portion, I could see that it would pass. So that when I flip it, it's going to be a function. So let's take a look at some of these points. And that's going to help us. We're going to draw the inverse here. This is going to be y equals sine inverse of x. We'll get to that in a second. So this point here is pi over 2, 1. 
and then I have this point here which is 0, 0 and then I have this point over here which is negative pi over 2 negative 1 and in order to graph the inverse I'm just gonna flip these so our domain and our range are gonna switch so now my domain is gonna go from negative 1 to 1 where in the original graph it went from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 and my range now is going to go from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Alright, and then I'm going to use these three points here and I'm going to graph those so I can see when I flip these around instead of having pi over 2, 1, I'm going to have 1 pi over 2, so that's going to give me a point up here. 0, 0 is going to be the same. And then instead of negative pi over 2, negative 1, I'm going to have negative 1, negative pi over 2. So that's going to be a point down here. And when I take that highlighted portion and I flip it over y equals x, it's going to look something like this. Okay? So what we have here is y equals sine inverse of x. It goes from negative 1 to 1 for our domain, which corresponds to values of negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what does this correspond to on the unit circle. So here's my unit circle. I'm going from values of negative pi over 2, so I'm coming down this way to negative pi over 2, and I'm coming up here to positive pi over 2. So really, all I'm doing is I'm using this half of my unit circle. When I go down, it corresponds to the part below the x-axis. When I go counterclockwise or positive direction, it corresponds to this portion that's above the x-axis. And then I just flip that. So again, inverse, we're switching the x's and the y's. So let's take a look at a another example here. If if I have the sine of pi over 4, we know we're talking about the y-coordinate at pi over 4, and we know the y-coordinate at pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So let's say I want the sine inverse. Again, we're switching our x's and y's. So now I want the sine inverse of root 2 over 2. So the way you want to think about sine inverse is I have this y-coordinate, and I know that this y-coordinate has to be somewhere in the first quadrant or in the fourth quadrant between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. What angle goes with that y-coordinate? So we can see that the angle that goes with that y-coordinate is pi over 4. All right. Another notation, it means exactly the same thing, but we'll use these two nation, no, notations interchangeably. I could write arc sine inverse. All right, let's pick another value of root 3 over 2. All right, so again, anytime you see an inverse function, you're trying to figure out what angle goes with this coordinate. So I want to figure out what angle. Again, it's got to be somewhere between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2 because that's the domain that we've been restricted to. What angle has a y-coordinate of root 3 over 2? we know that pi over 3 is going to have a y-coordinate of root 3 over 2 on this right half of the unit circle. All right, so let's move on to uh, inverse cosine. So I'm going to be working with y equals cosine x. That's my graph that I have here. And again, I want to try and figure out part of this cosine curve to take so that when I reflect it over the line y equals x, it's still going to be a function. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the part of the graph that goes from 0 to pi, and you could see that this portion would pass the horizontal line test. So when I reflect it over the line y equals x, it's going to be a function again. So let's take a look at some of these points here, and then we'll uh, switch the x's and y's. So here I've got 0, 1. This point here is going to be pi over 2, 0. So that's at the top of our unit circle. 
and this point here is pi negative 1. So when we graph y equals cosine inverse of x, I'm just going to flip-flop these uh, values. So this point here is going to become 1, 0. So I have 1, 0 down here. And then I've got pi over 2, 0. So that switches to 0, pi over 2. And then our last point, pi negative 1, changes to negative 1. And then up here at pi, let me move this. that out of the way a little bit. Okay, so here's my point up here. And then if I take this curve and I reflect it over the line y equals x, it's going to look something like this. All right, so I can see that my domain, we're going from negative 1 to positive 1. And this was my range before. In my range, we can see that I'm going from 0 to pi. So we just take this small sliver of the cosine curve to reflect over y equals x. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say I have cosine inverse of 1 half. Again, you want to be thinking what angle has an x coordinate. <coughs> of a half and that would be my pi over 3. So again going back to the unit circle let's take a look at what part of the unit circle this is corresponding to. We can see my range here we're going from 0 to pi so we're starting over here at 0 and we're going over here to pi so we're just using the top half of the circle. So if you think about this you're always going to have an x-coordinate on the top half of the circle and it's going to correspond with an angle on the top half of the unit circle so your answer to a cosine inverse or our cosine problem should always be some positive angle because we're always going to be between 0 and pi so let's say we have our cosine negative root 3 over 2 so we have an x-coordinate that's negative root 3 over 2 so we know we have to be in the second quadrant but we need to figure out what angle goes with that and we know that the angles that have a cosine of root 3 over 2 are the pi over 6 is so I need to figure out what pi over 6 is going to be in the second quadrant where it's going to be a negative x-coordinate and that would be my 5 pi over 6 so again as always if you have questions pause the video for a second write down your question in the margin so you can ask me the next time you see me and uh, hopefully we can get your questions answered then so that takes care of inverse cosine so quick review here inverse sine we're going to use the right half of the circle going from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2 again we're going backwards on the sine curve that's why we're going down to negative pi over 2 and we're going forwards up to pi over 2 that's why we go counterclockwise or positive up to there for the cosine curve we're starting here at 0 and going along until pi which again corresponds to the top half of the circle alright last one I'm gonna end the video here with these two and you can watch the next video uh, to do the uh, inverse tangent and we've got a couple of uh, other pieces of information and an example so again if you have questions make sure you write them down and ask me the next time you see me